So what I'm basically going to do with us today is I'm going to show you how God has been able to guide me using 1 Samuel 30. It's a normal story that we all know, but it has done a lot in my life. I mean, God did guide me through it. And it, it, anytime I want to do something, this Bible verse and the remnant that God gave me comes into my mind. But we all know the regular story. The normal story was that David, Saul was after David and then David ran off. He ran off to live in the land of the Philistines who were the enemies of the Israelites. And because the Philistines were very nice to him, they, he became like one of them, okay? So once they had a battle and they wanted to fight with the Israelites, so David just felt, I did it, what's the best thing to do? The best thing to do is to join the Philistine forces and then fight the Israelites. Though I'm from Israel, but Philistines have been nice to me, so let me just reciprocate and be nice to them by joining them to fight the Israelites. So he planned that day, if you go to the previous verse, verse 29, you're going to, chapter 29, you're going to see it, okay, the previous chapter. So he planned to fight with them. So the day they were supposed to go to battle, the other Philistine king said, oh no, we don't want David. He can't go with us because one of the king of the Philistines really liked him. That's the one that kept him in his city. The other king said, no, this David, we're not, we don't trust him. Now when he goes there, he might just turn against us in battle. Let him go back. Though we've left him to live with us, but he shouldn't stay here, please. He shouldn't join us in battle. We don't want him. So David said, well, I just wanted to help you guys and for you to see that I'm really one of you now. But since you don't want me, let me go. I'm going back. So David went back with the 600 men that were like his followers from Israel, okay? Meanwhile, you know they had a city, a Ziklag, a place where he lived in Philistine, with the Philistines. So when he got there, what happened? By the time he got there, he found out that his wives, his children, every single thing they owned had been taken away, had been burnt. The city was razed to the floor. Everything that they had taken their wives, their children captives. And everybody was like, what? What exactly is this? They were devastated. Now, those men that went to battle with him, his friends, were not very angry because even their wives and children were taken. You know how when people are, when people, when, when something bad happens and you're not even thinking. So the next thing was like, they planned to stone David. I mean, imagine, why would you want to plan to stone him? He's supposed to be your leader. You guys were all working together and suddenly because something bad happened. So, but, so what, what David did, what, did tell was that David's heart was broken. You know, but instead of him to start crying, what he said is, okay, you know what? God, I know you're here with, for me. So he took some time, prayed, and then did some inquiries and asked, oh, God, should I go? And God told him, go ahead, you're going to recover everything. And then I'm just trying to recap the story. And then he went ahead, did some journey, found out something, recovered. And not only that did he recover, he recovered more than he lost. I mean, that's just the basic story. But how, how, how will God guide me? This is just an ordinary story. But let me now tell you verse by verse how God used this to speak to me, which is what I'm trying to show you, that when you take your time and you're quiet to read, you, you, you're reading beyond the stories. That is when you say that God is guiding you through his word. And because that's when God gives you Rema. Rema is the guidance, it's not just the story. Okay. Now, I want us to quickly go to verse 1. And that was why I said, everybody, please ensure that you have your Bible. So go to verse 1. I'm reading from Good News Translation. Look at how God did. I'm talking about how God did guide me personally in my own life. You all know me. You know the kind of work I do and all of that. So it says, two days later, David and his men arrived back in Ziklag. They arrived back from where they went to. The Amalekites had raided southern Judah and attacked Ziklag. They had burned down the town, verse 2, and captured all the women. They had not killed anyone, but they had taken everyone with them when they left. Do you know what God said to me? Do you know how God did guide me with this verse? He said to me, Neka, you are a minister, a minister of the gospel. You go to talk to people about God. You go to, you go to, any, do you know anytime I talk to people, I'm fighting the battle. I'm fighting against the kingdom of the enemy. Do you understand? Because I'm trying to win people from the enemy back to God. So it's, I'm just, I, so God said, Nick, I see yourself like a David. Anytime you're preaching, you're ministering, what you're doing is that you're going for war. You're going to a war. And God said to me, that, do you know what happened to David? That God did not send him on that battle. God didn't tell him to go and join the Philistines. And that was why his, his family were attacked. So God said to me, when I didn't say, if I don't send you to go somewhere to preach or somewhere to teach or somewhere to do something, you're on your own. David probably was just going there to join the Philistines to show off. You know, because he's a mighty warrior. Maybe he was like, okay, Saul, now since you were mean to me, now you can see that I'm now with the Philistines. I'm now going to attack you. I'm not. 
God said to me, if you go where I did not send you. He said, I did not send Saul. And that was why his family was attacked. So it's not every invitation. You don't go off to preach because people are preaching. Or you do things because people are doing things. Or you just go ahead because, oh, now I know how to teach the word. He said, when you go and you're exposing yourself for nothing, that the enemy will attack. Did you see how God spoke to me? My own guidance. So do you know how did God guide me through this? I wrote it down. I said, guidance, do th don't do things for sure. Only do things when God has asked you to do it. That is my guidance. So sometimes when people invite me, please come for, come for this program. First thing I go to ask God, should I go? If God says I shouldn't go, I will not go because I'm not going there to expose myself. This is my own personal rema. So is God guiding me or not? God is guiding me through his word. The next thing God said to me again, using verse 3, God said, you know you have made so many enemies. Because for every time you go to win people from the kingdom of the enemy, okay, to the kingdom of God, do you know the enemy gets angry? So God said to me, do you know the enemy will always be happy with you because of all the children you're winning back to God, all the families and parents you're winning back to God? That you know the enemy is not happy. So what do you do? Because you know the enemy is not happy, you must always guard your things. You can't just live your life anyhow. Look at David. He was going to fight, the, he was going to help the Philistines to fight. Meanwhile, he knows it's been between battles because he has even fought this Amalekite at some point. So because you know he'd been fighting, then you don't leave your family. He left his family, he left his wives. There was no, ba no battle man that he left in that siglag. He only left his family vulnerable. And that was why the enemy was able to attack. So God said to me, you're always in the forefront. You're always preaching, trying to snatch people and children and families out of the kingdom of darkness. So what do you do? Cover your family with prayers. So I can't just always leave my family. We're going on vacation, we're having fun, we're always playing. I should always cover my family in the spiritual realm, in the place of prayer. That is another guidance for me. A very strong one. Because what do I do now? Every time as I pray, I cover my children, I cover my family. As I'm doing that, I'm covering them. I'm not now leaving them open, just like David left his family open. Because if David took his time to guard his family or left some strong men when he was going to join the Philistines to fight the Israelites, when those men came, they wouldn't have been able to attack them, but he left them vulnerable. So I won't say, oh, now because I'm working for God, I'll just leave my family. No, you have to guard your family in the place of prayer. That was how. Did you see how God is leading me? I mean, I'm talking about my personal experience. So when you're reading the Bible, what are, you, what are you looking for? If your mind is not settled. Meanwhile, I've read this Bible verse so many times, but it was the day my spirit was calm that God was able to talk to me concerning my life with this. And this is, is in my journal, so I will never forget it. And anytime I want to do something different from what God has said, this thing comes to my mind and it's like a guide, it helps me. Now let's continue. If you go to verse 8, I'm going to, to show you what God taught me in verse 8. How he spoke to me in verse 8. Um, I need um, verse 8. Okay, let's go to verse 8. So, you know, they said, verse 8 says, Okay, no, before I get to verse 8. Oh, verse 6, I'm sorry. Verse 6 says, let me start from verse 4. It says, David was now in great trouble. I don't have my glasses. That's why I'm struggling. I can't even see. Where's, where's my glasses? Oh my God, I can't. Okay, oh, it's very far from here. Let's just continue. So, verse 6, David was now in great trouble because his men were all very bitter about losing their children and they were threatening to stone him. But the Lord God gave him courage. Now, do you know what God said to me? God said to me in verse 6, he said, encourage yourself in the Lord, even if everybody leaves you. Do you know there are times when, I said guidance, sample, there was a time that I had a program in a school. I and some parents actually organized the program and it was a beautiful program. And so, I mean, I've shared this with you in one sentence. Some of the children were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues. And so it was, a, it was something they've never seen in their life and they were so excited. So when we finished, all the parents were happy and we prayed and we closed. But one particular father, the next day called and said he was going to take me to court. That why did I tell his child, why did I introduce his child to the Holy Spirit? And the child said she was scared that things were happening, that he doesn't read the Bible at home. Why would I introduce his child to the Bible, that he doesn't believe in the Bible, and that he was going to take me to court? It was a serious matter. So do you know what I'm telling you? I've shared this with you in what sense, I'm sure. So do you know what I quickly did? I quickly called up all of those parents that, ah, look at what this, a, a parent has sent a message you. What do we do? You won't believe it. So many of those parents acted as if they did not get my email. They acted as if they did not hear what happened. They left me, I was alone. 
I'm telling you, this happened to me years ago. And I stood there and I was like, God, please, you know I did this because of you. And while I was calm, God gave me a word. God told me, okay, God told me the mistake I made. God told me the right things I did and God told me what to do. Do you know what I did? I encouraged myself in the Lord. Do you know what I would have started doing then? I would have started crying. I would have started being angry at them. What kind of people are these? You guys are terrible. But when everybody left me, I encouraged myself in the Lord. So do you know what God was telling me now? He said, Neka, no matter how many times these kind of things happen, when people that you are supposed to be your helpers, when they desert you, don't get frustrated. When your best friends leave you, don't get frustrated. Just encourage yourself in me and I will always help you. Do you, do you know what they have done for me? Even when, if what happened years ago happens again, I'm not going to get bitter or frustrated or kill myself. I will just remember this word and encourage myself in the Lord. That's God guiding me. So this is very important. That's God's guidance. So when something like this happens, it comes up. I just remember it in my mind. And once I remember it, it makes me stronger. That's how the word guides you. So still that, and, that, and that's that. So now on verse 8, remember I said, please hold the Bible. We're searching today. We're searching for you to see how God has been able to guide me. You are next. I'm, not, I'm sharing this for you to know that God's guidance is real, but it's not automatic. You must make out time to read the word. You must be hungry for him to guide you. You must know that anytime you open the Bible, that what you're looking for is God's guidance, not just to mark register. Let it not be that I didn't read my word. Let it not be that my mother will say, uh, that Cheneka will say I didn't read the word. No, you need God's guidance in your everyday life, okay? So that's why I'm taking my time to break this for you to see how this ordinary, this Bible verse has helped me. So verse 8, verse 8 says, David asked the Lord, shall I go after those raiders? Will I catch them? And God answered, go after them, you will catch them and rescue the captives. Do you know what the Lord said to me? He said, Neka, no matter what you think you know, always ask me. No matter what you think you know, always ask me. I wrote it here. I said, no matter how much I think something is wrong and I should do the right thing, I should never take it for granted. I must always ask. So now, sometimes people call me, go, Cheneka, please, we want you to come and minister in our church. We want you to come and preach here. We want you. First, I ask God, God, is it okay? Should I go? Actually, this week, there's a woman in Ireland. They've called me or they want me to join them on Zoom for a, a women's conference, blah, 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 blah. Somehow I was just unsettled. I didn't want to. So I told her, okay, send me the details. She sent the details. I didn't feel, you know. And for like two days, I did not respond. I've been praying. I said, God, do you want me to join this? Do you want me to do this? So do you know what this has taught me? Don't just do things because they are right. I can say, oh, it's a women's conference. It's very good. Let me go and preach. Let me teach women. It, you must ask God. That's how the direction. And then just this afternoon, I mean, before I started sharing this video, they called me again. And I said to them, explain everything. When they were talking, the Spirit of God said to me, it's okay. Take the invitation. I mean, I would have just run off. I know it's something about God. No, that's God guiding me through the, through the rema. David had to ask God, should I chase? Will I overtake? David didn't take it for granted. Oh, I'm a mighty warrior. I've been anointed. Since I killed Goliath, there's nobody I cannot kill. Let me go and deal with this Amalekites. No, he asked God. So for me, no matter what I do, even if it looks so insignificant, this is a reminder for me that I must do what? Ask. And they look at how God, for me personally. Now look at what I did in my Bible. That verse 8 that says, David asked the Lord, shall I go after those readers and will I catch them? Do you know what I did? I highlighted it in red. Now what I do is that once there's something that is an instruction that is teaching me, that is guiding me, I highlight it in different colors. I did highlight this one in red. So when I see anything in red, what it's telling me is that this is guidance, God trying to teach you how to do something. And for other things, I highlight in different colors. So this is an instruction for me that whenever I want to do anything, I must consult God. I highlighted it in red. So even if you're using a phone, and you know, if you're using a regular Bible, I want you to mark it in red. When you have instructions, you mark in red. That's God guiding you. So when you're saying something, mm, God hasn't been guiding me, go back to your Bible. Look at all the things that you marked in red. That, that was a guidance that, that God did guide you with. Do you understand? It's very important. Now, I, now the next guidance was verse 8. I continue. Continue with your dream even if nobody is supporting you. Now, if you go down to verse 8, it says, So David and his 600... Anyway, if I made a mistake, you know I can't see clearly, okay, I don't have my glasses, so I guess you can follow me. 
So verse um, 8, or is it 9 says, So David and his 600 men started out. And when they arrived at Bessor Brook, some of them stayed there. Verse 10. So what I just read was verse 9, okay? Verse 10. David continued on his way with 400 men. And the other 200 men were too tired to cross the brook and so stayed behind. Do you know what God said to me? Using this verse 9 and 10. He said to me that, do you know what? When you know you need support, but the people that you, you think should support you suddenly are not supporting you. He said, don't get frustrated. Just continue going. God is with you. That's what, that, I mean, look at David. It is bad enough. And look at the people that even stayed behind. Their wives and children were also involved. But they, did, they couldn't continue. Do you know, David would have just gotten mad and said, enough of this nonsense. I can't just even deal with this. Or, what kind of people are you? But do you know what? David knew that once he had God, even if he was the only one, that he was going to get victory. And he continued. So God said to me, Janeka, sometimes you want to have a program or let me just use a typical example. Maybe sometimes we have videos in World Center. And I said, oh, please, all the teachers were meeting for videos. And out of maybe seven or nine of us, only three teachers came. The other ones did not come. And God said to me, do you know what? Continue as long as you're with God. As long as you know God is with you. Pray with the three that are available. You guys are still going to get victory. Do you understand? Don't start feeling like an orphan. These people know that we're going through a tough time. They should be here for us to pray. What kind of people are these? God? No. He said, just continue. He said, remember David. David did not even bother that those men were not with him. He continued. So that encouraged me. Sometimes we have programs and we are calling, oh, parents, come and support us. We have sent messages to families. We send to our friends. We send people and then nobody supports you. Only two families will support the thing. No other person will support you. God said, you know what? As long as God is with you and those two families, everything is going to be okay. Just go ahead and do it. Don't feel frustrated. Don't get tired. Don't feel like an orphan. And this encouraged me. So yeah, it's guiding me. So right now when we have programs or events or things, and maybe I expected 10 people to show up and only two people showed up. I know that once God is with me and those people, I'll go ahead and do what God has called me to do. That's God's guidance. So I don't feel frustrated. I don't feel worked up. And then look at the phenomenal thing that happened. At the end, when they finished, God, David actually gave them part of the things that they got from the battle. Showing that David knew that it was God that helped him, but it's not about the people there. Do you understand? And something else that that verse 9 and 10 also showed me, particularly was that sometimes people are actually tired. That these men, their children and wives were involved, but they were actually tired. That I should learn to understand that people actually get tired. That it's not everybody that's going to have the kind of energy that I have. Sometimes I'm like, oh, teachers, let's do this, let's do this. That people are actually tired. So when people are tired, you have to understand. You have to be kind to them. You have to be nice to them. You have to even remember all the times that they have helped in the past. But right now, they cannot help out. That taught me a big lesson. So right now, if, for instance, I have a program and I'm thinking that all the teachers should be here or all the parents, and maybe so many people did not show up for some reason, I should be able to understand that it's not because they don't want to show up, but that they actually are genuinely tired and be kind and nice to them and not get worked up and feel oh, everybody has disappeared me. That is guiding me. It's helping me with the work that I do. Do you understand? Good. So I don't know about you, but I'm just telling you how God's guidance. And do you know what? I've written this in my journal. And that is why I always go back to my journal. Because anytime, even when I've forgotten, when I go to my journal and read my journal and, and meditate on my journal, it keeps reminding me of how to live life. So I'm never going to get into trouble of not knowing what to do or people have left me. When I, I know that God has spoken to me about it. Same applies to you. I don't know what you're going through in life, okay? Now, I, first, um, in verse 16, something phenomenal in verse 16. Um, verse 16, what God said to me, verse 16. He said, okay, and... And he led them to them. You know, he met a boy on the road. And he led them to them. The raiders were scattered all over the place, drinking and celebrating because of the enormous amount of loot they had captured from Philistine and Judah. 17, at dawn, the next day, David attacked them and fought until evening. Except for 400 young men who mounted camels and got away. None of them escaped. Do you know what God said to me? When you, when, that's why God said to me, Neka, you cannot, live a, you cannot live your life without fasting and praying. It is always, he said to me, it's always when you're scattered, when you're always playing, having fun, when you're, 
that that's when the enemy attacks you, when you're not sensitive in the spirit. True. I mean, that was, he said to me, because it's Christmas doesn't mean you forget yourself. Because you're on holiday doesn't mean you forget yourself. That that is when the enemy attacks. And for me, I was like, okay. Because sometimes, truly, during holidays, I just like, you know what, oh. God said that even then, even, you, you have to still be sensitive in the spirit. The enemy attacks you when you are, when they were dancing, they were playing, they were having, he said, so be a lot. So for me, even, in, when, even when I'm in Hawaii having a vacation, I will still be a lot because the enemy can attack at any time. This is deep. I mean, that was for me. I don't know about you. But that's God guiding me. So already, I know the things that I will do, that when I do, I will fail in my work as a minister. I know the things that when I do, God has given me guidance. And that when I do the right thing, I will not fail. Then, as I conclude now, um, verse, um, remember I said to the word studying, verse 17. Verse 17, you can see I highlighted that verse 17 in red. Okay, because for me, it's an instruction. It's, God, it's guidance again. Verse 17 says, at dawn, the next day, David attacked them and fought until evening. David attacked and fought until... Do you know what dawn is? That means David probably started attacking them at 4 o'clock in the morning. He fought until evening, maybe like 9 o'clock the next day in the evening. So that means he fought for like 21 hours, non-stop. Do you know what God said to me? That sometimes when there's a serious battle, you have to take a 21-day fast. That, that 21 hours that he fought could have been 21-day fast. That you neck and don't get tired. Until you get what you're looking for, don't get tired. Because he said, it, they said, at dawn, the next day, David attacked them and fought until evening. Evening was, was when he concluded. He would have started fighting at 4 a.m. and maybe like at 9, he would have been like, okay, God, I'm really tired. No, don't get tired. So for me, even when I'm tired, like I told you, throughout this quarantine period, I've been praying. Pray, there's something I've been believing God for that I've been praying. After a while, I got tired. But with seeing this verse and with God telling me this, I said, I'm not stopping. If, if, if it's going to take me 30 days. But look at just, this is guy, I was actually even giving up. Sometimes I'm like, God. But with this, he said, David did not get tired. He fought until. So if you want something deep, if you want something big, why will you get tired? I say, oh, I fasted for two days. I prayed for one hour. I prayed for 10 minutes. Your prayer might have to be for one hour. Your prayer might have to be for 10 hours. Your prayer might be for seven days based on the intensity of the battle. This is God's guidance. I don't know how else you want God to guide you. But for me, when you read the word and God gives you rema, God guides you. That's how God did guide me. And then, like I told you, there's something I'm believing God for. So see, throughout this quarantine period, every day I, I, I leave the house, I come to work center, I enter the prayer room, I pray, I pray, I read the Bible, I pray, and I'm not, my daughter was like, mom, uh-uh, uh, is it not enough? I said, it's not enough. Now, even with this Bible verse I've seen, I'm not going to stop until I get what I want. And do you know the beautiful thing? By the time I press on, do you know what happened eventually? Overall, the remedy that God gave me overall, when David now finally was able to capture everything he wanted. Did you realize that number one, David got more than what he lost. He got his wives, got his children, and overall he still got heads, got flocks, got so many things that he had to now start giving out to people. And God said, if you press on, you're going to even get more than the enemy has taken from you. I don't know if you know. So for me, I'm not getting tired in my prayer life. That's, I don't know about you. That's how God, that's the remnant God gave me. That neck up. This is just an ordinary story. But for me, it's phenomenal, okay? Now, you will recover more than you lost. Guidance, I have lost so many things in the past. And I really want to recover and get more than what I lost. So David, God has shown me through David that if you do not give up. And remember, he had only 400 men. Do you understand? He didn't care about people that didn't follow him. I'm, I'm not like, oh, oh, everybody has to join me in this fast. No, I have to do what I have to do. Remind yourself you have to do what you have to do. There's going to come a season in your life where your parents will not be there to fast with you. Your siblings will not be there to fast for you, with you. You have to tell yourself, this is what I want. You pray, you fast. This is for me. I don't know. How, this might not mean anything to you. But I'm trying my own rema. How God has been guiding me with this verse based on the work that I do. Do you understand? Now, overall again, things get worse sometimes before they get better. Remember, Saul chased him out of Israel. So he was running around looking for where to live. He now lived with the Philistines and he wanted to show the Philistines his loyalty. And now they're like, we don't want you to come to battle with us. David, just go. 
Only for him to come back, his family and children have been killed, oh, sorry, have been taken away, have been, the, the city they lived in has been burnt down. I mean, how bad can he get? So he was like, okay, God, I think it's finally over. Then his friends and partners now planned to what? Stone him. And David was like, what kind of life is this? Then when they agreed to go and fight, 200 of them said, in fact, I'm not, we're not going. David was like, okay, let me just die. But he encouraged himself in God. God said to me, no matter what, never give up, keep fighting. So, and then what happened eventually? When it gets as if things are worse, that might actually be when God, things are cut. Because shortly after this battle, David became the king of Israel. What if he gave up at this point? I don't know if you understand. So for me, it's like when things get worse, he said to me, Neka, when things look like they are really, really bad, God can actually, that could also be when God is trying to show you something phenomenal. I mean, this has encouraged me a lot. What other guidance do I need? Do I need somebody to appear and say to me, Neka, the Lord said to tell you, hmm, Neka, I want you to know that the Lord said to tell you, he, that is spooky. Spooky. The word. God has spoken to me through realm and revelation. And that is what I need. And as I read again the next day, tomorrow, he's going to speak to me another place based on other challenges that I'm having. Maybe with my husband or my children or my finances. He will always speak. So I don't need any spooky prophet coming to tell me one thing. Oh, open your arm. I'm seeing some things. Oh, mm -hmm. spooky. That's spooky. That is spooky. This is the most authentic way to hear God. It's not like people can have dreams for you and people that you trust or the pastors or things. But hear God for yourself. He's, he guides you through the world. That's my point. Um, that doesn't mean that God is no longer. And then another thing overall, what God said to me again was like, did, did you imagine how David would have felt frustrated in the beginning? Ah, God, you anointed me. You made me think. You, 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 sorry, you anointed me. You said I'm going to be king. Saul threw me out. And you know you're the one I love and worship and do everything with. God, why would you allow me, why would you allow my life to just end like this? Now I went to help the Philistines that have been nice to me. Then you allowed this one to come and destroy my whole. He would have felt that God has left him. Now, don't think bad things happen to nice people sometimes because the world is filled with evil. Because we live in a fallen world. But you know what? Even in the midst of all of that, God is still God. So something, when this happens to you, don't say God doesn't exist anymore. God is not real. If God was real, where was he when this thing happened? David would have said, God, where were you when you allowed these Amalekites to come and attack my family and you know I love you, God, you know I serve you. No. Things happen. But you know what? In the midst of all of it, God is still always God and you come out victorious. Let me end with the story of what happened to us. You know, we're planning to have an um, Easter wonder in Periwinkle. You know, we had gone there, we had started building the city. I'm going to show you a short video of, we had built the tomb, we had built the city gate. I mean, we we're trying, it wasn't even easy for us because we didn't have enough money, but we we're still trying to put things together and then suddenly COVID came. Initially I was angry, I said, God, why would you allow this to happen? God, I prayed and I fasted and I've been preparing myself. Why would you allow us to put in so much energy, we put in money and all of a sudden COVID came? God, what kind of, what? But when I thought about it, God is still God. All things will work out together for good. God has not disappeared. Even while I was with this, God said, you know what? If, as, because David was sorted out at the end, no matter what you think you've lost, everything will be sorted out at the end. So this is God guiding us. I don't know about you. When next you go to read your word, read your word hoping that God will speak to you and guide you no matter the challenge you're facing. Don't read it to Mark Register to submit your work to the channel to your parents. God guides us through, you, through the word. I hope this actually helped out. Please take your time to read your word. God bless you. Okay? <laughs> See you next week. Bye. So how did God guide me using David's story to overcome what happened to us during, for Periwinkle? You know, we had planned to have um, Easter wonder in Periwinkle this year. So this is the tomb. We had actually built this tomb in Periwinkle. And the whole idea was we're fighting for God, if you know what I mean. We wanted to redefine Easter so that people will come and celebrate Easter the right way. This was meant to be the tabernacle, okay? People were meant to come celebrate Easter the right way instead of doing um, Easter egg hunt and all of that. So ideally, in my heart, we we're fighting for God, you know? And most times you think that because I'm doing something for God, everything should be perfect. No evil should come near me. So that was the plan. But then COVID happened. And all of this work that we had done for like eight weeks, that is the stage. We had even built the stage. All of this work 
came to a standstill. Everything is now left ruggedy and all of that. And it was enough to frustrate us to say, God, why didn't you, that's the stage. Why didn't you, that's the city gate. Why didn't you stop us? Why didn't you tell us? But life happens. So he encouraged me by saying, look at David. He was anointed. He was doing great things for God. But they came, took his children, took his family, destroyed everything. It was enough for him to give up. But you know what? God eventually still came true. Because things have been wasted in your life doesn't mean God is not God. Life happens. Life is filled with evil things. But God still puts everything together. So after seeing David's life and how God was able to make him recover more than he lost, I was super encouraged. So instead of me feeling bad for myself, I said, no, God is still in control.